Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon everyone in uh, South Asia and good morning to everyone in UK. Uh, this is the continuing interview sessions with lab champions, lab personalities and lab experts all over the world. Uh, in the previous interviews we have uh, discussed with the lab champions as well as the lab experts from India, UK, uh, Europe, uh, United States and Canada. Uh, today uh, we are continuing the same uh, interview series and today we have the very special guest for you guys. Uh, he's no other than the Steve Watts all the way from Hampshire, United Kingdom and he has been in the industry for a long long time. Uh, previously in the uh, one of the uh, Labby Champions interview, the first one, uh, I spoke with the Chris and then like uh, he told uh, the story that like uh, it was the first time he met uh, uh, you know Steve at the one of the Labby user group meeting in Newbury. So that is when like uh, he found out that like uh, he made his own people or like a tribe or whatever you want to say. And that was where like uh, he understood about like, uh, you know, the various LabVIEW uh, guidelines and the, the best practices on how to improve the quality of the software and improve the application we're building at the moment. Uh, so with further ado, like uh, I want to introduce uh, Steve Watts. Uh, he's the LabVIEW champion as well as the certified LabVIEW architect. And he's also the chair of the uh, new phenomenon. Uh, I think like uh, you guys have seen in the background at GDEFCON. So we'll learn a lot from like uh, Steve. So like uh, Steve, like uh, please uh, give your brief introduction in the beginning, how we started with the lab view. I do not know like uh, this is one of the rare interview I believe that uh, we are like uh, trying to go into your past and then trying to understand everything. So please, yeah, on to you now. Okay, Thank you. I'll try and keep that quick. Uh, yeah. So I'm very old. And I've been doing this a long time. So uh, I, I was looking back at when I first did programming, and that was in 1985. And it was on a uh, 8051 controller in 1985, and it was all in hexadecimal. Uh, and unlike quite a lot of LabVIEW programmers these days, is is I've used an awful lot of languages uh, other than LabVIEW. So. Uh, I'd already been programming industrial sort of software for 15 years before I actually found LabVIEW, as it were. So my perspective is ever so slightly different, I would say, because of that, you know, because of mm -hmm. half miles, as it were. Um, so from a programming perspective, I went from doing Assembler and HP Basic, HP wow. Pascal. Uh, then we <laughs> worked on big Unix systems. I wrote some brilliant stuff in, in HP Basic and Pascal, really brilliant stuff. I mean, I was doing laser mm -hmm. engraving, big statistical process control systems. And, and so this was all all prior to even seeing LabVIEW. Anyway, I, I, I moved on from, uh, so uh, I didn't go to the university. I went straight from school into industry. Wow. Uh, and so this is really, I was programming from sort of 17 um, and that was my job. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done well at university. I don't, I'm not, I don't work well in, <laughs> in that environment. <laughs> I, I, I'm a practical yeah. sort. I like to make things. Uh -huh. So yeah. And, and I was really lucky. I, I got in, into a, uh, into a company. It was quite a small company, 200 people, but we did everything. Thing. You know, we, we there was a, a group of four of us. We had a brilliant mechanical engineer, um, and we we made uh -huh. pressure transducers. But we actually built the factory floors. We did the pressure transducers. Wow. That was so we were doing laser welding, laser uh -huh. trimming. Uh, we had massive test systems. We were we were churning out sort of hundreds and hundreds of these things a, a day, uh -huh. um, and it was it was great. You know, and 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 my. Engineering career meant I, I worked in every department in the, in the factory as well. So I was actually in the drawing office doing drawings with pens and ink. Um, which, <laughs> that that's how old I am. And uh, but it's funny because the stuff you learn in that is exactly the same as what people are rest, wrestling with now. So I mean the change control procedure, mm -hmm. and control, and is all things you would do in a drawing office. It's uh, it's it's quite interesting to see, you know, these these so-called new things. <laughs> yeah, they, they've, they've been around for ages, really. Um, so anyway, that 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 carried on. I, I ended up becoming a production manager 
at a very early age, and I, I found out that I didn't really like making, mm-hmm. making things. So I quit that job, uh, went for another job, um, and that was that was good because they sort of sent me to university, or it was like an open university. So it was um, I, I I decided that I was actually writing software um, all the time. Mm-hmm. So I needed to start classing myself as a software engineer, not a test engineer. So, and that was a real eye opener to me because uh, being taught uh, software engineering from other software mm-hmm. engineers and, and to a very high level, this was a, a master's degree level, it was was wow. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand any of this stuff. And then what I was always trying to do was trying to solve the conundrum because, again, in in five or six different languages, I always had the same issue. It's uh, when I had a project, I'd roar through mm-hmm. the project, making great progress until the very end, and then it was always a pain to finish. So finishing a project was always really painful. And it always ended up a bit of a mess. Not not the actual, <laughs> the, the way it was written or anything, it was just the whole project tended to become and that was always of an interest to me. It was why why all projects in all languages end up the same. Way. <laughs> uh, and in, in the second company, I was I was writing Turbo Pascal, so I was doing a big SCADA system, which is um, a, it was measuring vacuum furnaces. There was loads of vacuum furnaces, and we were measuring the process and, and that, and displaying it and recording it. And. I got introduced to my first business partner, John Conway, who's the co-author of our book. Actually, mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot of the ideas are his. He's, he's a great designer behind a lot of the ideas in our book. But he um, he kind of introduced, he said, well, the problem is you're not designing your code up front. You're just writing, your, you know, you're yeah. just trying to solve the problem from, from the point of view, right from the start, I'm going to solve the problem. Uh-huh. He says, what you've got to do is actually spend some time thinking about how are you going to solve the problem? You know, how the structurally the thing is going to be. And he introduced me to a couple of cohesion information highlighting, which, again, everybody if you stands up and talks about software design, says coupling cohesion information hiding. And I found uh-huh. that very few people actually understand it at a fundamental level. Um, <laughs> but we really, we really, between us, we really applied ourselves to it then we said right this is where we're at we both went on the same course we both started writing parallel programs applying the things Mm -hmm. we were learning so we actually decided and and this was we pretty much told the company we were working for is that we're going to act (laughs) usually you know you're going to pay us less than what we're worth and we're going to use you as a university and do our studies all on our yeah. you know, like the time. So essentially, you know, we were we were writing software for them, but we were doing our studies mm-hmm. at the same time. So mm-hmm. what we both did in parallel is is design a is a density uh, mm-hmm. transducer software. So a test system for measuring density transducers. And, and so I did it, and he did it. But what we decided to do was to apply coupling cohesion information design mm-hmm. uh, information hiding to our designs and not talk to each other until we'd finished and then show each mm-hmm. other our designs and see what the mm-hmm. common parts were and what the differences were and it was very interesting very interesting indeed that, that we, we we just went through that and like i say johnny's probably a much higher level designer than, uh, than me mm-hmm. uh, i'm very much practical designer than than him i would say if we were going to compare each other and so he'd done his system in sort of layers and i'd done my systems in in components what i call components now um which that was his his term i i he would always have a sort of layered comms component and i would always have you know this is a power supply this is a meter (laughs) those will always (laughs) be my components so i was i was very much more sort of object biased in my design and but everything else was pretty much the same. Every, you know, the, the code was very much the same. And we thought, this is interesting. The, apart from that subtle difference in how we structured the hardware abstraction layer, it was very, very different. And this was in 1998. 
uh, and he'd inflicted Levy upon me at that point, and I was quite happy in Turbo Pascal, but I he, he said, give it a try. So I rewrote a uh, I rewrote my SCADA system, which took me mm-hmm. six months in Turbo Pascal, and I rewrote wow. it. <laughs> and I thought, it's horrible, yeah. because, <laughs> again, but because I wasn't applying these design uh, things at the time, but uh-huh. principles at the time, but he um, he said, well, "Yeah, that's that's it. It's that six days. This is this is the world we're in. Is is this productive uh, software that we can generate? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's a very different world than what I was. You know, spending six months building a Scala system and gradually yeah. building it, and you know, and doing all that testing, and 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 now I, I could do it in six days. And I thought, well, there we go. Then." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's me sold, really. So, and that was 1997, I think. Uh-huh. So that was maybe uh-huh. four, probably. Because in uh-huh. those days, you didn't have service support contracts, so you always just bought a license, and it was whatever you had. Um, and so, from that perspective, we were we were aiming for this, trying to make projects more predictable. Uh-huh. Um, and we we worked very hard on it. And, and eventually, year 2000 came and I looked at myself and said, do I really want to work in a factory doing the same types of things mm-hmm. every day? And, and, I, and I said, no, 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 I don't want to do that now. It was a big jump because uh-huh. I had very young children then and they're struggling to pay the mortgage and all that kind of stuff. So uh-huh. I'm, I'm quite a risk taker. So I just thought, yeah, let's go for it. Now's the time. So I joined John. <laughs> And 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 uh, SSDC and, and off we uh-huh. off we went. Um, and then we worked in a, a company in uh, just up the way from us doing sort of nanotechnology stuff. Wow. Uh, mm. Which was all it was all yeah it was it was a lot great it was a fantastic job but we we um, we were working on on this system and they they had another load of contractors working on this big test system. And we were working on just a, a set of drivers for some hardware. And the guy oh. working on it said, oh, can you come and help us? Um, <laughs> we redesigned it using our, the principles and had, you know, pretty much uh-huh. um, told these people how they should be designing their software um, and gave them. And, 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 and again, the, the thing people don't concentrate on is the, the interfaces. So what we did was define all the interfaces for all the systems and say, you will write the software. However you write it inside the interface, this is the interface to the software that you will provide to us. So we did the overall architecture. We told them, this is the interfaces you will provide. Uh, do, you know, and make it work inside the interfaces. And when you're done, just give it to us, plug a whole thing in and make, build, make the whole architecture work. And they they added a, a bit to it, but they they sort of said to us, "Oh, this is you know this is a very interesting new way to work for us because mm-hmm. we were just being like lab view programmers um, and just building stuff and convincing ourselves that you know if we wire our lines neatly, then we're actually designing." Well, no, you're not. You're just being a neat person who puts syntax onto a block diagram. Designing is a very much more higher level thing yeah um and yeah we we, we went to that and, and that, that was really we, we started then thinking about the book and so it's like well yeah we ought to get this down really because what we really wanted was for lab view to be written much better than it was yeah correct because yeah. at the time it was the wild west you know it was it was, <laughs> wasn't certification it wasn't you, the you just and and it was affecting we couldn't get some work because we used lab view uh-huh. you know companies would say no nah, no we're not going to use that language it's just a mess you know and 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 it's not it's 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 lab view is great but people can make a mess with it <laughs> and, and yeah it was always getting blamed, and everything uh, yeah. Yeah, it was getting blamed for the mess that people were making with it. So it's, it's a bit unfair, really. But um, so it was it was restricting our business. So we we fought, you know, if, if you make uh, if you t- tell people how you can successfully write code well, then people yeah. will write code well, and the business will expand, and and we'll get more business. And all these companies that are saying that you can't come in because you're using that, you will will free up. And you know, it's transpired that that has happened. 
Uh, so we put lots of work into the book. Oh, I'll get a copy of it. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Software oh, engineering yeah. approach to lab. Yeah. yeah. It's quite old. Still relevant. But don't buy it from Prentissor because I don't like Prentissor anymore. <laughs> people, people talk to me nicely. I might slip them an electronic copy. Yeah. Um, but I don't want. Yeah. So anyway, we, we wrote the book. I mean, I'm very proud of it. I mean, chapters three and four are, are, are still, I think, uh -huh. very good chapters on software design. And we really dig deep into sort of things that wouldn't weren't uh, available then. So I'll tell you an example. We mm -hmm. we we pioneered queued message handlers. We pioneered. Oh wow. We uh -huh. pioneered. Go through the book. We talk about MVC. So that was in 2002. Uh -huh. So we're talking wow. about the pattern uh, and how people should be using yeah. design patterns. And that was, well, we wrote it in 2001. So that was 2001. <laughs> we were doing that. So we, there wasn't cues available then. We were making our own. Uh, and, and having a queued message handler to, to, so what we use queued message handlers for. So we, we're very strict. So people use things um, in the wrong place and for the wrong things so then mm -hmm. for example they use message handler and call it a state machine well it's not it's queued message handler and mm -hmm. you use queued message handlers for things you want done quick um, yeah so for example we we use queued message handlers for uh, error handling so we have a queued message handler for that we use error uh, queued message handlers for uh, ui updates so we have a whole little component to do all of our ui updates go goes for a queue and this isn't this isn't some great design that we this is a design this is how windows works <laughs> this is, these are all stolen <laughs> ideas you know none of this is new i mean our our, our, our component design of sending messages to a what you would call uh -huh. a factor now but we, we 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 don't use that term as a, yeah. uh, a simpler version of it but essentially the component design where you send a message to the component and it does the action yeah. that's a small talk construct you know that's from another language and that's that's how objects work in small talk um, uh -huh. so small talk you send a message to the object and the object runs yeah. the method it's not like c plus plus where the object has a method it, you know you're sending messages <laughs> and it's to my mind it's always that's always been a much clearer way of having a computer in your head uh -huh. you know is yeah. i can i can really envisage a thing that i send messages to that's very easy uh -huh. to envisage to me. yeah um, and i can and and that thing then goes off and does its its work but i don't care how it does its work so that's information hiding i'm hiding the complexity of how this thing does all work. All I care mm -hmm. about at the time is I'm sending a message. And then if yeah. it doesn't do its work, then I'm interested. So then I dig down and then that thing is built of things that are doing their work. <laughs> so again, you know, you're, you're trying to keep each bit you're looking at as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just that's just simple cohesion. You know? But so it was these kind of um, things that we were trying to bring um, to the world, as it were. And we had a reasonable amount of success, but it's there's an awful lot of um, the lab view world that isn't really interested in software design. And the reason, yeah, that's what I mean. actually need to be interested. Um, you know, it's my day job. This is what I do. This is, uh, uh -huh. you know, I, I, I've done lab view now for 20 years and it's been my full time job for 20 years. Wow. So I'm very interested in making. My life easier. I mm -hmm. I work fixed price, for example. So again, if I'm if I've got a fixed price project, and at the end it becomes unpredictable and hard to manage, that's really costly to me and very stressful. Yeah, you know, that's the worst time because that's when the customer's saying, well, "Where <laughs> is it? Where is it? Where is it?" You know, you you want to put the hard work in up front when it's very relaxing, so that yeah. you don't do all the hard work. So, for example, a lot of our projects, we don't expect a change to take much more than mm -hmm. I don't know, a couple of minutes. You know, if you say I want another graph, 
I should be able, the way we structure our software, I should be able to go in, change it, build it, send it away in a in quarter of an hour. If I've got yeah. a bug to fix, it should be structured yeah. in such a way that I can find the bug and fix it in minutes. Because you don't want to be scratching your head. And I, I see so often um, people saying uh -huh. that they go back to their code after six months and it's like entirely new set of code. Right? <laughs> and, and I find that just shocking. I just, I just find it absolutely shocking. Go back to stuff I wrote 12 years ago and fault find it and fix it. And that's because it's got structure and rules and effort and hard work. Yeah. That, are, that have gone into the front end so that when you open up the block diagram it tells you the story yeah. of, of, yeah. The, of the thing you're trying to fix and, and getting yeah. to the getting yeah. to the bit that's broke or bit that you want to extend is easy and that's mm -hmm. quite, um, uh, I've got it off and I ran that's not my history <laughs> don't, don't take me long to get into into design um anyway so yeah we we did we did the book in 2002 uh -huh. And it was such hard work, and 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 to be quite honest with you, we kind of fell out with the community and fell out with Ken and all that. Uh -huh. didn't, didn't, I don't know. We just put our heads down and did work um, for uh -huh. probably about six years. We just did work you know, and made money, loads of projects. Uh, and in two thousand and nine, I, I I just thought I got a bit older and. I thought actually it's time for me to re-engage with the community. So, and and we would we you know we'd made up with NI and had mm -hmm. relationships with them again, and it was, they were keen to sort of start user groups. I was keen to start user groups, and so we started mm -hmm. uh, which wasn't the first user group. Uh, the Cambridge in the UK, Cambridge, doing they're, they're kind of bigger and our side. We we do other stuff. That they do, oh. <laughs> they do make it much. <laughs> um, yeah. But we, you know, we we, and that engagement began with, you know, and and the the start to that was was oh, I better present on some of the work I did. And I did a presentation at, at some conference, and this is I'd never done a <laughs> presentation before, and I never went to university, so I'd never uh -huh. stood in front of anyone like before, and it was mortified i was absolutely absolutely rigid with terror and <laughs> he would say it, it was like a phobia you know i was i i was just a mess and consequently the presentation i did which wasn't on anything i was particularly interested in, but i don't believe it or not i've just talked to myself for ages but i don't really like yeah. talking about stuff i don't really like talking i like yeah it makes sense I like talking about ideas. I'm not really uh, into sort of this, this was a <laughs> this was a bit of a marketing thing. It, it really didn't I didn't didn't work well with me. And and, and anyway, I, I it was all then I had to remember the script. And of course the first thing that happens is you stand up and when you're nervous, the script falls out of your head and you forget everything <laughs> and that just makes you more nervous. Uh, so I, uh, and I came back, and they, 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 the people who were there said, "Oh, yes, you ought to go on presentation training." <laughs> but really, my presentation training was running the user groups, uh -huh. and we'd sit in the room, and there'd be twenty of your mates eventually. These people, yeah, would come in, and and you'd present your ideas to them, and it would be only be ideas. You know, it wouldn't be marketing. It wouldn't be. I wouldn't be selling. I would be. Just saying, this is an idea I'm interested in, and and, yeah. and then people would pick it apart. It was always constructive and always helpful, and and I found my voice, and and my, my voice is, and I found the, and from that I found out how to present for me. And mm -hmm. scripts are no good for me, you know. I, I just have to have a load of slides and, and then just talk to them about them ad hoc and wander around and just mm -hmm. generally idiotic on stuff, and <laughs> and that that was was my way of presenting you know and that's and i don't i don't even get nervous looking back that's that's incredible yeah. from this nervous wreck and the steps uh. up but the the steps up were important you know the the if if you want to present i i personally think is you know present on something you're interested in yeah present on something you know 
about so you can put a slide up and just talk about it and and then and then practice at your user group and it's one of the great sort of hidden benefits of a user group is uh -huh. you get you talk to to people and like i say i, yeah. I never had it was you know i was really factories machines next machine factory machine yeah. and, and i would talk to i would talk to about two people in my day you know yeah <laughs> Yeah. And that was just, you know, messing around usually. So yeah. that, that was a nice progression. And so then that, that went on to sort of, I then got embedded enough in that I, um, I was the first uh, chair of the European DLA <laughs> Summit. We, we mm -hmm. did that at Newbury and I kicked that all off and that's gone on great guns. So that's nice. Um, and then, and at that time, it was very hard to get, people to present mm -hmm. the, the community was very quiet uh, people uh -huh. the list, but they didn't want to tell you know <laughs> and it's actually yeah. encouraging enough people to out so that they want to present and again user groups do that really well now we've got a, a yeah. nice ecosystem of people learning to present yeah correct yeah want to present and and we didn't have any of that you know we, we, we just yeah. started the user there wasn't a pool of people who who could present on in Europe really, oh. uh, so that that's been built up nicely and that's that's worked out well. Um, what else we do? Oh, then I I needed a, an outlet really for ideas that I was coming out with, so I uh -huh. uh, started my blog. God knows when, long time ago now, hundred one hundred and sixty articles ago. Um, wow, and that. And that's been a good outlet for me because I'm, I have a lot of ideas and they, they sit in my head until I can write them down. <laughs> and, yeah. and normally it's not good for me. So it's been very cathartic to, to actually write a lot of this stuff down and I, and I mess around, but I, I'm not, I don't take <laughs> business terribly seriously to be honest with you. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. Really, I've, I've I've not I've not had to take business very seriously, and, and it's yeah. I, find, I find it all quite amusing, and, and 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 I hope that sort of comes through. It came through in the book, and you know, I hope it yeah. comes through that yeah, that's be professional, you don't have to be serious. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, that that to me is I'm you know I'm very serious about certain things like the quality of my software. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not serious about my business. I'm not really serious about presenting. I'm not really. Serious serious about uh ideas and stuff like that i think they're they're there to be sort of pulled apart and explored really um so what else so yeah they got, got me got me blog um uh -huh. and that's that's done all right i've had about a third of a million views and the best thing is i've had about 1500 approaching 1500 comments um, oh, wow that's really nice which is is <laughs> And the comments are brilliant. You know, the the, the people often the, the the comments are actually better than the blog. To be quite honest, because I I, I <coughs> a lot of people spend a lot of time on 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 their blogs, but I don't. I I have yeah. an idea, I churn it out, and and it gets gets sent out. And, and yeah. uh, I'd rather I'd rather send something out half formed. To be quite honest, you and, and get people to talk about it than actually try and finish the idea. This is why I'd, I won't ever write a book again because a book has to be a finished idea. Yeah, like uh, you can you can change and then take the feedback and then change immediately and get the feedback on it. Yeah, yeah I got, uh, I got two, by, I yeah, two pieces of feedback yeah. from my book. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, I think one guy one guy told me the jokes weren't funny. So that made <laughs> me laugh even made me laugh even more. <laughs> but uh, um, uh, Fabiola emailed me to say that oh, she thought somebody funny. was ripping my book off because Prentice Hall cocked up the printing. It's a graphical programming book, but they 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 did a whole run of uh -huh. uh, of it that uh, that just uh, just was all fuzzy, you know. So that was that was a pain in the neck. So up to that point, we were all five stars on the uh, on Amazon, apart from uh -huh. one guy who who went on a course and gave us three stars because he said uh, the lab your training course was was teaching the same things that are in this book. He didn't look at the date of the book and the date of the course. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if he'd have done that, he would have given us a bit more credit. But there you go. Yeah. Can't you can't please everyone. Um, but you know, the the it was my first contact with Fabiola, and, and 
Wow. We, we've kept in contact all since then, and we're good friends now. Uh, and it's it's just just it's been a nice journey really and and i mean really for me the the journey is is the projects and the customers and, and that uh-huh. I, to be quite honest with you labview is just a tool for my toolbox it's just one of many tools in my toolbox hopefully mm-hmm. and as you become a paid professional you mm-hmm. fill up your toolbox yeah. um, and and that's what adds value to you you know so it's um it's, it allows me to go loads of places around the world and do my work and work on pretty much. Mm-hmm. I mean, our, our projects span sort of body forming machines for um, mm-hmm. McLaren sports cars to um, we do alarms on ferries. We do uh, large monitoring systems out in the desert, you know, with wow. thousands of thousands of channels and gigabits. <laughs> data floating around i do complete yeah. management systems i do yeah. do you know it's, it's just anything anywhere and and i love yeah, that. Yeah. I love, love wow. going in into a place yeah. being, being able to do yeah. and see some of this stuff you know it's 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 just fun so we, i mean we 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 don't we we want the lab view it to be as transparent to the customer as possible what we want to do is get involved in the pro- uh-huh. project you know we, we when we're putting alarm systems into the ship we're down in the engine room messing around mm-hmm. looking at the engines and yeah and, you know and, and that that's yeah. that's just brilliant i mean get, walking around shipyards is is like a um <laughs> it's just like an engineering theme park for me you know it's, it's just so fantastic Wow. To see all these ships in dry dock and you know, yeah. and have to climb up a ladder to get into a ferry up yeah. about nine stories and and that yeah. is just you know, that that's wonderful, you know, and, and you know, I, we're blessed really or I'm blessed really. Um in 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 what we do and 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 what opportunities it gives us, you know. It takes it takes a while, but that that's yeah, that's kind of history in a very <laughs> roundabout way. <laughs> I, I yeah, ramble, that's, like, yeah. You know, my blog is yeah. called Random Ramblings, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> my, my yeah, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, sure, sure, Steve. Like, uh, I'll, I'll just like add your uh, blog link uh, in the description below when I'll post this video. Uh, so, so, I think like uh, you are one of the one, you uh, and then who has seen it all. Maybe like uh, from the beginning of advent of the lab, you just like you discussed. Uh, even before, like uh, Yenai came out with the design patterns, like uh, sophisticated ones and everything, you were the pioneers. And then, like, he started writing a book, and then that actually helped, uh, you know, develop the communities as well. And you have also seen the rise and fall of the library communities as well. And uh, in India, like, uh, we recently started, you know, like a lab user group. It's called like an Indian lab user group or the Inlog. And uh, we are also like uh, facing similar kind of challenges like you because like uh, we don't have enough people who want to come forward and then contribute and everything and sometimes like it feels like you know me and like some of the other chap we're the only guys like who are presenting all the time and then it seems like it's our conference rather than other people so like we're trying to add a little bit of spice and then try to motivate and everything and uh, uh, the another uh, challenge what we have found out is like uh, you have already mentioned that you know the people who are in the industry you know that they don't actually take the lab programming seriously or so on and uh, as uh, you have mentioned that uh, you have been using uh, with like a half a dozen or even dozen different kind of programming languages and everything. And you have already seen the you know, pros and cons and uh, different ways of writing a code. And you have also written very advanced, high level way of writing a code as well, uh, using like a, you know, actor and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so uh, what advice would you like to give to the people like uh, who are uh, you know, the beginners or like who are planning to jump into the like uh, test and measurement industry using LabVIEW, as well as the people like who have been using LabVIEW for a while, uh, but like uh, do not actually implement uh, Yana recommended guidelines, uh, whether they are the solo developers or like uh, their team do not actually implement these practices, or the people like uh, who have been using LabVIEW for a long, long time, but may not uh, know like uh, the best practices or have not even met a single LabVIEW champion like you, like uh, who have been not only using a lab view, for example, like a, you could have used the lab view the way you have been using for a while for your entire career. But rather than that, 
you try to figure out the best way to do it. So uh, what's your take on that one? And then what advice would you like to give it to the uh, community? Well, for me, delivery is everything. Uh, uh -huh. Finishing a project is the most difficult challenge. And uh -huh. however you write your code, uh -huh. whatever methodology you like, or yep. paradigm you like, or design pattern you like, you need to deliver because that's what you're judged on. Um, yeah. And you, you can make a, a, a career in certain countries, not in all countries, but in certain countries you can make a career not delivering. <laughs> but it's coming home. And, and honestly, that, that, that it, I would say concentrate on those aspects of your job. It's, it, you know, signing off a project, being in control of the project at the end of it. Um, yeah. making sure you know you can sign off your project and what your customer wants and, yeah. and to be quite honest you people skills that view is a interactive process you know it's mm. it's not like it would not so take take a, a text-based language for example it's not like some of the text-based languages where you sit in a room for six months working on one problem and then you go ha ha i finished and those days one, they're gone in text-based languages, but they've really gone in LabVIEW, and they never were there. You can sit down with LabVIEW, and I, I can sit down with a customer, and I can, on the fly, show them changes to user interfaces. I can say, oh, well, if you don't like that, you can have this, and this is one option here, and, and you're doing this interactively, this, this process. Yeah. But you need people skills to do that. Um, and part of those people skills is, is not being fed world 100 spend some time with people and have, have a okay. life outside of it you know have an interest uh, that you uh -huh. can talk to people around you know I've, I've got jobs before because i liked cycling or i've got jobs uh -huh. before because you know we you know and and instantly you you're sat down and then the other thing is is if you put yourself on a pedestal quite often your end users are going to view you as suspicion um so i've always made it a very strict policy of mine is is that when i'm on the shop floor i'm one of the people on the shop floor and i talk to them how they want to be talked to and and, and i don't try to sort uh -huh. of come in in a smart suit and a posh car and sort of say oh, yes, <laughs> i'm the expert and you're just here you know because you, you want the users to be telling you how it's working for a start after you've delivered it but you also want yeah. the users to tell you what they like and what they don't like. And and that human interaction is, you know, I mean, if they tell you they don't like something, it's not to get all hurt and upset. That's feedback. It's a creative process. You know, this is, the, yeah. it's good to get back. And, and, and the thing is, is, is you then need to respond to that. You know, if, if you've got users and they say they don't like something and you come back and say, well, here we are, here's a change. You've got a rapport then. You've got, they know that they can trust you to take their information yeah, and, sense, right? and, and, and push it back. And, and none of these are LabVIEW skills, you know, because LabVIEW yeah, is correct. syntax. Syntax is syntax. And, and you get um, any programmers of any language, if they're, if you put 15 new programmers of any language in your yeah. project, and you give 15 old lags who have been doing mm -hmm. it for years a project, <laughs> which project do you think is going to be successful? Is it going to be the old lags, or is it going to be the the is it, you know is it the guys who've been doing it donkey's years or is it going to be the so the experience helps as well, and and you get yeah, experience by by making and doing. You know you you don't yeah. get. You don't necessarily get experience from social media representing and stuff like that. You get experience by stuff and deliveries, and that you get the, the experience you get from. And and I'll I'll pick up one thing about the um, style guidelines is that actually okay. they're again they're a they're a personal thing to be quite honest often. So you know, I've gone in. I've gone into companies, and they said, "Oh, yes, a case statement shouldn't have more than five cases in." <laughs> I think, but what if I've got? Oh, I want to write six times. You know, <laughs> what do I do then? Do I do I then re? Yeah, uh, and and it's and it's you know, uh, it's just some personal person. You know, some person didn't like that. I mean, we we have coding standards in SSPC. Uh -huh. 
But if you write a coding standard, you have to also have a why that's a coding standard. Yeah. You know, you have to write down, you know, uh, um, I'm trying to think of one now. But for example, label the so you label it label it with the true case yeah correct. the reason to do that is because one for fault finding your brain wants the positive your brain always wants the positive but if you have to say for example you're labeling the case the, the true state of a case and it's oh. got lots of lots of logic in the front of it for example and you're writing yep. it and going mm-hmm. If I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this or I'm doing this, then this is the true case. Well, yeah. you, you've already written out what's wrong with that. <laughs> you shouldn't, that logic is too complex. Yeah. But because you've been forced to write it out as the true case for that statement, you, you're beginning to think about it. And, and words are very important and language is very important to, uh, uh, to, the, to the... I know it's a graphical programming language and, and people get all caught up in that, but... I've had to try and fault find code that's just a, a load of random icons. That kind uh-huh. of don't really <laughs> so people get all caught up yeah. in the icon editor and make these random icons. And to be quite honest, it'd be kind of more useful if they'd have just given it a decent name, you know? <laughs> and yeah. actually, wrote <laughs> you know, I know it's not going to make it all around the world and universally, but it still doesn't work for random. So I, for me, I have programs, and I'll, I'll show you some code in a bit, but our programs are words and pictures. Words and pictures uh-huh. mean a lot. And, and for the discipline of writing code, words are very important and, and mm-hmm. actually language is very important, coming back to the true statement. But yeah. you, you label a, a for loop, for example. Uh-huh. Well, label it with the what the iterations are for the loop. Uh-huh. You label a while loop. Label it for what it's doing. You 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 know, and, and and this what it's doing is you're 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 trying to teach your brain. So again, if you're labeling a VI, calling a VI a name, and you're struggling to find a name for it, well that means it's not cohesive. Because if your yeah, brain, enough. if you put my built a VI and you can't clearly say what it's doing, then you can't clearly name it. So yeah, there's sorry. some there's an issue. It's a it's there's a there's a design problem there which your language is telling you that, that it, there's something wrong with how yeah. you're designing your code and it's very I, I, i'm getting more into it at the moment about you know the the relationship between sort of language and and, and code mm-hmm. and actually how you how you um talk about it i'm, I'm doing a presentation at uh, GDERM mm-hmm. about state yeah. machines mm-hmm. and i see I've seen people take the syntax of state machines, which are, is reasonably well known, but they're still not designing state machines properly. <laughs> because the state yeah. should describe the state the system is in, or the module. Mm-hmm. It can be system or module, but you know, it, it should be describing that state. And there's a there's a there's a way of describing that state. The, the, I'm not going to give away the presentation, but mm-hmm. you know, it's, <laughs> the, the, yeah. the, the verbiage is very important. The way you talk about these things is actually important, uh-huh. and, and, it, and it affects how you design, and it affects how um, um, how a whole pro- project becomes easy to debug um, mm-hmm. because you know it, it's just a, a general sort of oh, I'm struggling for the words really, but it's it needs to tell a story. You know, VIs need to be honest. Need to tell you what they're doing, and, uh, <laughs> and they yeah, need to, uh, and when and, and when they're all interacting together, all the way they talk to each other should be clear. Um, mm-hmm. And a combination of sort of pictures and words adds to that story. I think I, I you know, it's it's. I find I find it's helpful for us. Um, but anyway, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> I'll keep doing this, sorry. Ran, <laughs> yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, the, que- the question was actually like, uh, what you have said is also like a completely uh, your perspective and everything. Uh, the only question was, uh, I wanted to know like uh, your approach on how uh, the, uh, you know, the beginners as well as the, you know, the middle uh, level experienced people. Uh, who have been using a lab view for a while, but like uh, they are not uh, following the proper guidelines as well as they are not aware of the community, for example, the CLA summit or like a CLD summit or the ZDEPCON or something. Yeah. Or well, even all, the they, like they, lab user group. 
they've got to look at themselves and, and ask yeah. them, are, are they happy with what they're doing? Are, are they yeah. stressed? Do they yeah. feel that, that writing LabVIEW is an enjoyable uh, job? Um, yeah. All those kind of things, you know, it, because I used to find that it was very stressful, <laughs> you know, at the end of the project. <laughs> Very, I don't get stressed so much at the end of a project now, you know, because I know yeah. I've, I've put in the hard work to make, to add the flexibility at the end so I can make yeah. changes. I've made my code nice to look yeah. at so I don't mind debugging yeah. stuff. Yeah. So it's really questions for yourself. So, you know, I mean, to be quite honest with you, I, I, yeah. if, for example, it's a use case based thing. If, if you work in a, in a company and you're the only person that works on a machine, yeah. do what you like. You know, do what, whatever makes you happy. Because that is, I, mean, I spoke to one guy and he said, when I leave, they're going to shut the kingdom. <laughs> so <laughs> you can't, you, you can't apply, apply, apply a blanket set of sort of rules to people about how they should work, really. It, it, but yeah. if you want yeah. your code to be uh, flexible, for example, yeah. uh, which to us is really important, then you need to apply some very solid design rules you know this this is where you then need to then say well well i need i need this so this is the things i need to learn so then you've got to yeah participate in your user groups you need to read you need to read languages that aren't yours either you need to you know to read read books on design um and to be quite honest you yeah you could read books on city design and that actually improve you because wow. it's design is design is design is design. You know, a beautiful bridge you can look at yeah. and you think, like, well, that's a well-designed bridge. A beautiful levy program you can also look at. Yeah. You know, there's, there are, are visual aspects to, to oh. all these things. So you, you, can, you can look at a, a lab view program that is just awful. And you know it's awful. And at a glance, you know it's awful. <laughs> well, okay. why i mean i i find it strange that people can produce this awful code and 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 stick with it. Now, <laughs> i i mean i wrote a, a blog article about apologizing and saying don't uh -huh. apologize about your code and and yeah. the sort of hidden message was if you feel the need to say sorry <laughs> for your code perhaps you ought to tidy it up a bit you know don't you don't 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 apologize for it being untidy because that's something you're in control of it's like saying you know <laughs> I, I, I apologize for swearing so much well don't swear so much <laughs> and, and that, will, that will actually help a lot of the issues i see it's just pure um it, it's just inattention to detail really that, that, that people apply well that's just human instinct you know if you want to churn out code really quickly and you don't yeah, want to fill it the right comments and yeah and you know, and you don't care about how you've made your modules and you know, all the hell go well you know go go for you 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 you, you if, if if your code works it's fulfilled it's it's fulfilled it's it's number one job uh we have uh ssdc this is one of, one of john's we have a thing called requirement zero. So requirement oh, zero is the the, the the hidden requirement you apply to all projects. The requirement wow. zero wow. is it shall not be shit. And <laughs> and oh. that's really you apply to you, that question to everything. If 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 you think wow. it's if you think it's shit, then you probably shouldn't <laughs> believe it. I mean, they give it fancy names like refactoring and and yeah, stuff yeah, like that. But actually, <laughs> if you know something's wrong in your code, mm -hmm. then you need to times that by 100, the effect it's going to have. Because if you've uh -huh. left something dodgy in your code, yeah. then you've left it 100 times in your code all over your code. Because if, you, yeah. if you're the type of person that leaves something dodgy in your <laughs> code and, and thinks they're going to come back to it, well, then it's, it, it's going to be, ma ma you know, we're dealing in, you know, huge projects here. Yeah. So if you leave something a bit untidy, that's going to riffle down all the way through, you know, and, yeah, and you it's, yeah. it is, it's going to have an effect. Um, yeah. And one of, the, you know, one of the issues when I was talking about sort of projects always going wrong, one of the issues for me where I didn't do a lot of this design work was that my architecture was so brittle mm -hmm. that if I made a change, it would break everything. 
uh, because everything was linked together or coupled together. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, that's just hard work. You just have to go through and make sure that that doesn't happen. And and yeah. um, but it does it does traumatize people. I think it's it's they they um, they're so scared of the code that they've produced <laughs> at the end of the project that when a customer comes back and, and says, oh, can you just change this? It's, oh, my God, I can't change that. It's too hard. It's going to break everything. Well, yeah, well, then that's you're telling yourself that there's something wrong yeah. with the, the yeah. thing you built. I mean, I've, I've spent a lot of time refactoring a project mm-hmm. this year, pretty much unpaid, mm-hmm. uh, because it can't, be changed and it hasn't been finished yeah and yeah. to my that's mind i looked at that thing well that's this is this is a problem that's only going to get worse so i talked to the customer i said look i've really got to put some hard miles in and make this to a stage that it can uh-huh. be changed and so you can uh, so i can i can then fulfill your requirements because this is a university job so they're just going to go <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, we're going to want loads of changes because universities always want loads of changes. <laughs> just, it's just... So if it's yeah. you know, going in, if it's not fit for that particular purpose, you, you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, correct. Makes sense. So again, there's not very many levy type hints and tips I can give. Really, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's uh, I'm, I'm not deeply into the syntax. I, I would, yeah. uh, I would learn as much as you can and make, but. I would also make independent judgments. You know, everyone's different. You you make you do things yeah. that are comfortable for you, and and drop the things that you find uncomfortable. Uh, you know, and yeah. we and we've been pretty relentless in that. We we drop. We'll look at something. If somebody says to us, "Oh, I should do it this way," we'll look at it, and if we don't like it, we just say, "No, we don't." Yeah, awesome. Because we deliver. Because we got a foundation of delivering code. Uh-huh. You know, just going back to the the thing with delivering is all. If you deliver, <laughs> yeah, you can make these judgments. If you don't deliver, then then you really have to start looking at why you're not delivering. Um, and yeah. that that's that's your. And um, from that perspective, I would learn good software principles, uh, uh, and I, and and I would apply them. And I wouldn't necessarily look to. Uh, the lab view world for that a yeah. lot of these are, are out in the outside world um i mean we 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 have a tool but i i wouldn't stick with one methodology mm-hmm. to be honest with you i i would um i would use the methodology where it's most appropriate so for example we use oop for hardware mm-hmm. fashion lights. we don't really use yeah. it from us mm-hmm. uh, because to us, it gets in the way of the design. Yeah, um, correct. Yeah. Actors, you you'd use something like actors for you know if if you've got lots of services that you want running in the background, mm-hmm. then actors are great for that. But mm-hmm. um, you wouldn't use them for everything, why would you? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. you're limiting the. Um, and, and every design decision you make on here, is, I'm presenting on, on this, is, has an impact. <coughs> so, for example, if you choose, I don't know, people get very enthusiastic about loading dynamic stuff, for example. Let's have loads of dynamic stuff. <laughs> well, yeah. if you take that choice, you're already making debugging difficult. So you say, yeah. I'm going to sacrifice debugging because I like firing off things dynamically. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's your, that's your sacrifice you make. Now, for for us, we never sacrifice debugging, so we don't mm-hmm. use dynamic stuff unless we really have to. And there are instances that you have to fire dynamic mm-hmm. off, but there's not very many of them. So you know, if a customer wants to be able to press a button and pull yeah. a graph up, that's got to be dynamic yeah. VI. Nothing you can do about that. Yeah. If you're using TCP/IP and you've got uh, servers, multiple listeners, <laughs> then you need yeah. dynamic because it's the only way you can do the job. Um, yeah. So, you know, but the overall sort of data flow thing is is so powerful. And I, th- I think sometimes the lab view community gets all all excited about so-called new technologies. And none of these technologies are new. I mean, 
who has been around <laughs> since 1968. It's nearly as old as me. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the, these so-called newfangled things are not newfangled at all. Uh, oh. and, and, but they, they, have their, they have great use. You know, they're, they're, yeah. they're useful. But use them, don't use them everywhere. You use them where they're useful. Because <laughs> the moment they start getting in the way, for us, we just drop them. We say, yeah, no, no, probably, no, no. Really difficult. So we're, this is the point in time that we are, we're yeah. not going to eat. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll see um, our code tends to be very, very basic because uh -huh. we believe that basic lab view is, is still pretty powerful. I mean, we do massive. Yeah, correct. And data flow just on, on its own is massively powerful. You know, every mm -hmm. every Airbus you see fly, flying over you is all written in data, not written in OOP, it's written in data. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, they, if you can make an Airbus fly on it, then you can, you mm -hmm. can probably do solve a lot of your problems without going down lots and lots of different methodologies yeah. routes. But there's some oh. certain things that you can't you can't do using standard lab view elegantly without it. Yeah. Um, and I, and I've also seen some some native sort of OOP programs, you know, so guys who've uh -huh. learned to doing C plus plus, and I've seen them rewrite it in lab view, and that looks all right as well. Yeah. Um, to them. So again, it's it's whoever your your use base is. Yeah, if a company is used to using that kind of thing and and productive in it, then. Go for it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Again, these yeah, decisions are really, are really based on who your personnel is and how you can actually deliver quicker. Um, yeah. So again, if you deliver quicker using Active Framework, and you can prove that you can deliver quicker, <laughs> go for it. Yeah. You know, that's that's yeah. uh, that's yeah, you know, to my mind, that's the justification for using it. Um, yeah. What I don't like is when people use stuff inappropriately. So, you know, right. I. I I have this program that doesn't need Active Framework, but I've used Active Framework. Well, then when the oh. first problem you've got in that instance is your somebody else coming to it, they'll, they'll look at it and go, why did you use that then? Yeah, <laughs> and, makes sense. Because it doesn't fit the solution. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's you know, the, 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 the solution to the problem has to kind of uh, be related to the problem, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's correct, already yeah. a barrier understanding i think if, yeah. if you, yeah you know that i like doing it this way is not actually necessarily the best excuse for actually writing code in a yeah way. using like actually... a particular design pattern or framework yeah yes. yeah you should, yeah. you should use what's appropriate um yeah. and and again from my perspective we always go up a line we go we go right this is a problem we'll do the simplest way possible simplest way uh, well, we wanted yeah. flexible IPA, so we add a bit of that, but we'll add to this simplest way in a structured yeah. kind of way until the point where it's still the simplest way, but it gives us the things that we still want. Yeah. So, you know, we want it to be flexible. We want, I mean, really flexibility at the end is is, is our main kind of thing, being able to yeah. debug. Uh, and yeah. I, I would say that the the way we program is is to program slow to debug fast. I mean that's our mm. our mantra really is is yeah. you, you spend time at the front end because that's easy time you know yeah and and that saves you time at the back end and it just makes life so much less stressful yeah, um, yeah. because you really don't want to be debugging stuff for hours with a customer yeah, behind you. yeah um, <clears throat> yeah so those kind yeah. of things I, I would say to people to 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 look at but uh, you know and and. I, it's I know it's a bit nuanced and wishy washy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know I know the <laughs> probably the stock answer would be to go to you know going to learn this. Well, yeah, it really depends what you're doing. To be quite mm -hmm. honest, yeah. I, I'm, yeah, I think people uh, need yeah, to be a bit yeah. more honest with themselves. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is very interesting points, uh, Steve. Like uh, you have given like uh, lots of tips to the you know uh, the developers as well, lab users and everything. And I had like a many different uh, interviews with like uh, different like a uh, LabVIEW champions from all across the world as well. And we most of the time we used to discuss only about LabVIEW and best practices and the community and everything. But uh, this has been like a very very different conversation because you not only spoke about the uh, Yana ecosystem and community, but also like uh, the systems and then the people itself, like uh, how people have to interact and then the impact of like uh, you know uh, different processes on like a human 
and like uh, how you should approach uh, different strategies and so on. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is really interesting. So uh, the first interview I had taken was with like a Chris Roebuck. Uh, we had like a very nice, interesting conversation as well. Uh, but like I forgot to uh, discuss uh, something about the blue flag in the background. So uh, please let us uh, tell us tell us about like tell us about the G Devcon. I think like uh, this is the second season uh, you are yep. having. So uh, please like uh, tell us the history behind this because this is the first time we're actually like discussing about the G Devcon. So uh, how did it start? It? Like how you guys? I think some of the guys are from like a uh, uh, you know the Europe as well. You are in the UK, so. How did it all yeah. like uh, you know, put up? Yeah. So it started with uh, discontent, should we say? So we, we <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, so we used to go to UNI days. Uh, it used to be a big event in London. Eight hundred people uh -huh. used to turn up, six hundred people. But it was, it was a lot. Of, a lot of people used to turn up for a day. Uh -huh. And what me and my mates used to do is we used to turn up and then pretty much eat breakfast and go down the pub. And that wasn't terribly good for NI days, and it wasn't terribly good for the the actual process. So we we talked amongst ourselves and said, well, mm -hmm. actually, for people who've been doing LabVIEW a long time, which is is one audience for NI days, mm -hmm. we probably ought to be talking to each other and 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 sh presenting to each other to a point. Yeah. So we started the user group track. And it was a huge success. So the user group track was all the different user groups would get together and they'd submit a presentation and we'd, uh -huh. we'd have a presentation in, in, in I days. And it was, it was a brilliant day. Um, and we thought, oh, well, that's it. That's been a brilliant day. You know, we, we had to go to a bigger room because we couldn't get in. And uh, you know, we had mm -hmm. about 150 people <laughs> up and it was nice. Wow. From from NI's point of view, it, it was good because it created a buzz, but also we would turn people away from their, their presentations, really. Uh -huh, so no, I, no. I, I kind of, in my deep down, I kind of thought, well, this, I mean, this wasn't them saying it because they were <laughs> hosts, yeah. but this is in my head. I was thinking, yeah, there's got to be a point in time when they're not going to see value in this. Is that actually we're, you know, we're taking their their potential audience members away so that we can all talk amongst ourselves. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so <laughs> then they then they they changed NI days to a point where it wasn't something anyone wanted to present at, and so they our audience disappeared from that point of view, and and it occurred to uh -huh. me that we weren't. We weren't masters of our own destiny. We we were at the whim of some marketing decision uh, or some uh -huh. accounting decision. It, you know, it wasn't with us to be able to do this. And, and I'm yeah. I'm kind of so we're a bit of a mixture with the groups. I'm I'm kind of pro presenter. So what I I I think is that if you make uh, a situation where presenters want present and want to take risks and want to put effort in to make good mm -hmm. presentations then the whole community will build from that um, yeah. and and so i think if you make presenters more central mm -hmm. then you think, and and the first thing to do is you give them a platform yeah correct and it's, and it's it's trying to do it in a predictable way um so and, and it really it came from a, a champions forum uh, mm -hmm. joke that I put on saying I think it was £250 I think the ticket for NI days was and, uh, and, I, and I think oh, that yeah. joke and he said why don't we all meet up in the pub and spend £250 on a on a pub crawl around London and uh, and it came from from really that conversation uh -huh. uh, on the Champions Forum wow. and so, so, well, you know for that money we could do our own conference and, and, and that's that's really where it was born uh, and then I I got the the team together as it were. So I'm I'm chief troublemaker. It's all my fault. Um, <laughs> but uh, anything good that happens, it's it's the team really. <laughs> they do all the hard work. <laughs> just, I mean, and and the amount of effort they put in is just incredible. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it just yeah. blows my mind really. And 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 we're a we're a true democratic organisation. Wow. In that everyone gets a vote. Right? Um, and we. We, you know, it's a, it's, it's not, it's not the easiest form of management, but it, I, uh -huh. I, I like that management because it, 
to my mind, we've built a team that looks after each other and, and mm-hmm. we're and we're open and we discuss the issues and and so it's um it's a, yeah it's an interesting sort of dynamic but so yeah so we put the first one in um so oh, yes. devcon one and it was very successful i think people people loved it um the people that went we got we got really good feedback mm-hmm. um and what we try to do is 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 uh, each presentation so we got quite a strict editorial policy in wow. that it should be quite unique the presentation it should have something practical as a takeaway um, oh, so wow. somebody can sit down and, and listen to it and say oh we can we can go off and go off and use that um and and this which is quite hard it's certainly hard for me because i, I can <laughs> do more sort of wild and woolly presentations um so it, it, it's we wanted it to kind of be practical we wanted it to be for teams so we wanted it so that a whole team could go and learn um and we, we we're going to try and push that but primarily what we wanted to be able to do is is facilitate other events and uh and you know and have another one and keep on going so it's a reliable ongoing event um and it's hard work <laughs> running events <laughs> is, is really hard yeah. work and that's, yeah it makes that's sense, yeah. probably so you know, this year we're trying to make it a bit more sustainable in, in sort of effort and everything like that. But uh-huh. it's, um, it, it's, it's just hard work. And we're all volunteers. Uh-huh. Um, so this year, I mean, it's a non, non-profit organisation. Um, so what, what that means is that we can employ people, but any money we make has to go back into yeah. the, 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 our, our articles of association, which are to facilitate. Yeah. Uh, more conferences yeah. as it were. Yeah. So there is a price to pay. It's a paid event, two day event. The one in Birmingham uh-huh. is a two day event. Got I can sneak I can sneak you now. Yeah, you can you can tell us that like uh, where where it is going to take place as well. So that uh, yeah, potential uh, viewers from like a UK or Europe they can visit your uh, conference. Yeah it's Birmingham England mm-hmm. this year. Uh, and it's August. Uh, hold on. Let me bring it up. I don't know why I closed it. Oh, I know why I closed it because we're messing around with Google Center. I wasn't mm-hmm. prepared. Um, yes, yeah, so it's, it's 21st and 22nd of August. Uh-huh. Um, and there's, I've got some news on that that that's, uh, might affect that booking, but it's in Birmingham in the um, Birmingham Repertory, Repertory Theatre and Library uh-huh. of Birmingham. Uh, so it's a nice venue, big venue. We've mm-hmm. taken a bit of a risk with the venue, especially with the way that uh, the economies are at the moment. But uh, you know, we'll see how we go. It's it's been a risk really from the from the start because you know we didn't <laughs> know we get an audience even. So we're not we're not against taking risks. Um, so right, let me let me see if I can find you the the agenda because that's actually the most important thing. Mm-hmm. A hidden, there's a hidden page on the website. So, oh, okay. Yeah, you can see everything <laughs> at www.gdevcon.com. Uh-huh. Wow. So in alphabetical order, order uh, there's designing advanced user interfaces and user experience for LabVIEW-based applications by Arev. All right, I'm going to try and say her name. She'll, she'll probably kick me for saying it wrong. Hambar. Yeah, I think, I, I think she's yeah. from Armenia, I believe. Yeah. Yes, she is. Yeah, Rafa Solutions. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got a panel discussion. We're kind of keen on panel discussions and how to introduce new members to a team of LabVIEW developer, developers and keep them there. Uh, we've got a guy from National Instruments called Ben Leadham doing, mm-hmm. he's doing something really interesting with the next gen code in his own time. Oh. He's oh. Adding, adding his own uh, language over the top of it. It's very, um, I, I, I'm, I'm very intrigued about this one. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Chris Woodhams, who's one of the members, is why bother with continuous deployment? Uh, Darren Mava, Ham- Hammers, Nails, and Philosophical Tales. Uh-huh. Um, so he's talking about, oh, so, so Chris Woodhams, well, six points himself, why bother with continuous deployment? Um, uh, so it's going to be a panel discussion and an introduction to, uh-huh. to continuous integration. Uh, 
Wow. Uh, Daryl Math is going to do hammers, nails, and philosophical tales. So he's going to talk about if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. And he's going to talk about um, having many hammers. <laughs> it's generally <laughs> personal, personal thing. Uh, Gary Borman from CERN, who presented last year, is doing a practical uh -huh. guide for six acquisition. So that's going to be this comes down to the, the practical way that we work. Is he's, he's going to be talking about noise and stuff like that on signals, which I think very useful and he, he comes from CERN so that'll be oh. high level stuff. Ruth Payne's doing Git sub modules and alternative oh. approach to code for use. Um, we're very, seems like a very interested in sub modules of the Git oh. and SVN and Mercurial and how to embed them yeah. into a project, yeah. something we'd be working with. Uh, we've been talking to our AI development team about as well because uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's, a, there's a, a model for the IDE which I'd quite like to, to C, which is oh. rather than having lots of tools, is having toolkits you can pull, pull in as, mm -hmm. as you need them. Uh, Ian Billingley, so he presented last year five tips for efficient FPGA programming. Oh. James mm -hmm. Powell's doing application designs around SQLite, so he wrote the SQLite toolkit. A <laughs> uh, route strongly typed Nirvana with John Medland. Very intrigued about oh. that. Uh -huh. So there's, there's something something going on there. Um, importance of abstraction and standardization and automated test and measurement systems with John Hobson. So he's John O, does the Quick Drop podcast. Malcolm Myers is doing a class based producer consumer loop actor architecture. Matthias Bordeaux is going to be doing web applications in Pure G. Yeah. Uh, Sam Sharp's going to be working with databases. Sam Taggart's going to be from America is going to be doing test driven development. I'm going to be doing state machines done right. And Tom McQuillan is doing plug in tools to take your frustration. So, this is to how to add tools to the. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah. So, that's a quick one for you. Brief run for you. Uh, <laughs> when, when we, when we, uh, when we, we're going to release the page soon. Um, so wow, thank you. Got, thank you. Thank you very much for like uh, giving us this sneak uh, peek of like, uh, you know, how this yeah, amazing like a content yeah we're <laughs> okay we're like actually like a really really glad and like a very happy that like a you know a team of like a, you know very experienced developers not only from uk but from all across the europe and even like uh, coming close to the asia as well i think Armenia is like a very close to the asian border and everything and then everybody coming together and then like a, you know uh, you know contributing to the society and then like a, you become more aware and all this kind of stuff well, and the, and the the ambition for us is, uh, you know, we're not we don't want to necessarily be UK based. You know, uh -huh. we, what we our our reason to exist is to facilitate this yeah. in, in, all over the place. You know, and 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 that's that's really what we want to do is to try and help people. I mean, we we were lucky that we all invested money in it up front. Um, for the first one, so we took we took the risk on. But now, hopefully, if we carry on making some money out of each one, that profit goes into facilitating new yeah. events. And it's and it's not just conferences; it's training and uh, well, yeah, training. It's workshops and sort of practical kind of lab. Yeah, and, and, our, and our real focus is on sort of teams and project fulfillment. It's not really on LabVIEW and the syntax of LabVIEW. You know, and, and I've got that covered. Yeah. We, we don't need yeah. to to get involved with that, but the people here <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, are are experts in delivering code, working code mm -hmm. to to customers, and that's to my mind that's my main interest now. You know, I, I I've <laughs> I'm quite happy to program LabVIEW how I program LabVIEW. You know, I'm quite productive, yeah. and, and there's, there's yeah, but there are issues in the process that are very interesting and and and, <laughs> and you can make your main benefits not from language you can make your main benefits for example um you can use <laughs> rather than being 100 percent lab you you could be i don't know 50 percent lab you and 25 yeah. percent linux and 25 percent database and i yeah. bet you can, i bet you can solve a lot more problems with that mixture yeah. than you can with 100 percent lab you so yeah, it's, it sense, yeah. it's introducing different Aspects to that. I'm very interested in in trying to get different graphical languages as well. Uh -huh. It's not the only graphical languages. You could use yeah. Ladder Logic, for example. You can use yeah. um, Simulink. It'd be really mm. good to, for us to be more aware of each other. You know, so yeah. LabVIEW and a PLC 
if you, if you're aware of how they work and go together, well, you've got then a safe system because LabVIEW can do the non-safe stuff. PLC does the safe stuff. So you, you're in a whole yeah. different industry then. That, that, you know, a lot yeah. of, the sort of larger test systems need that. Yeah. So all of that is is kind of where I would like to push this. And, and as, as eventually, I, you know, I want I want this to be the place for presenters. I mean, I, you know, the, the people who come and watch, mm-hmm. uh, you know, come to the uh, watch the videos or come to the event, they get benefit from it. And that's that's yeah, great. That me, me at a slightly sort of higher organizational level. I, I want mm-hmm. I want to start treating presenters well. And I want I want them to be, you know, ideally, if I could, this is my dream. I, I want to be paying people's expenses to come over. You know, every, everything's done voluntarily in our community. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and really good people. I mean, and you'll, you'll probably feel this as, as much as anyone. Really good people can't yeah. afford to go to NI Week or Geneva or, or just countries yeah, that you just sense. can't get to because it's too expensive. And and yeah. and you, so we're actually missing out on 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 quality presentations, yeah, and different world views and different perspectives, yeah, and, and, and you know people are working in different areas, and and and, yeah. and you just don't get that because you're trapped in your in your own sort of country <laughs> because everything's got to be yeah. free, you yeah. know, and, and then until we can start covering some of those costs i think um and, and you know other other conferences do it but it's just getting people people are used to having free um having free information given to them you know they, they're used to that they're not used to paying for it because then i have made, <laughs> made them used to that and being very generous um yeah. i think that well, i think that world is changing um between yeah. you and me and the game yeah, yeah. but so yeah, I mean that's that's GDevCon. Great team. Um, yeah. I've, I think if we go over to the Quick Drop podcast, I'll do. Um, we we the team talk about it there. It's a good place to go to to listen to us. I think oh, we're podcast oh, number five. Oh, oh. Um, so there's about four or five of us all talking about it and our, and our, our ideas. And oh, I'll, 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 yeah. not necessarily everyone's ideas either. That's so again the thing of being a democracy. I'm only pretty really putting forward my ideas for it. Um, mm-hmm. there's, there's, um, quite a few of the members are more uh, attendee focused than I am. <laughs> Should we say <laughs> but they're, they're focused on the attendee experience, and that's what makes it a good organisation. Is because uh, you know I need I need railing back from my ideas, and uh, and you know the, sometimes the the attendee side needs to be yeah. What we think about. That's because they're actually you know they're the ones paying paying for the bills, and they're the, they're yeah, the ones who sense, yeah. come. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's it's good to have the different um, perspectives, really. And that's that's the good thing about democratic management is that you know each person's perspective hopefully is yeah. uh, represented. Uh, we we have quite robust arguments. We're having one at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah. which is good. You know, because yeah, because I trust everyone. You know, I trust everyone in the group. I trust yeah. the motives, um, and that's awesome, so yeah. their, their opinions are, are very important to me. Um, yeah. And hopefully minor are to them as well. Uh, I got one more thing to talk about then. So yeah. what we're talking, and again, this is only something that we've been cooking up in the last couple of days. Uh-huh. Is we're going to try and put on a workshop on the day before. So the uh-huh. thing we're planning is that me, Fabiola, and Jörg Hampel are going to do uh-huh. a day's workshop paid. Uh-huh. Um, for I don't know, probably about twenty people if we can if we can sell the tickets. Oh. But the idea being is that we're going to start the day off with talking about ten ways you can knacker up your project and and then how yeah. you can, how you can not you know how you can rect- uh, mitigate that. <laughs> then yeah. we'll go into design and then we're going to do a a practical sort of approach, um, practical sort of which will have reflections on that that. Which will be based on sort of DQMH stuff. So it'd be me, Fabiola, mm-hmm. uh, Jörg, um, and it's it's again coming down to the facilitation side. It's, if anyone else wants to do that around GDevCon, then we mm. will look to try and facilitate that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Essentially, you just have to sort of book the room and get the tickets and, and do yeah. the work. But you know, <laughs> facilitation 
behind that is is mm -hmm. is is hopefully there. So this is this is going to be a vast experiment. We don't know what we're doing. We've never done it before. Um, I mean, we've done training. I've done training, and uh, and Fabio mm -hmm. is a, a, a trainer, so yeah. it, you will get good quality training. But it, we've never actually yeah. sort of done this day kind of workshop. I, th I think it'll be really good. It'd be a good thing for a team to do, you know. Um, yeah. But it's a it's a good step through the complete process. Hopefully, that's mm -hmm. that's the idea behind. Yeah, it. I believe I believe like it is it is going to work because like uh, uh, I don't think like any kind of audience would find all this kind of like expertise, uh, you know, recommendations and best practices and even training in one single place. I think one of the different thing uh, I believe is you know uh, there's like a CLS summit as well, but like in CLS summit, like a main everyone is like already certified. They already yeah. know how to use labs and all this kind of thing. But GDEFCON, I think like it's uh, like I think like uh, one of the novel solution to like uh, people like uh, who are not only looking from you know the I don't want to criticize here, but like uh, you know the Yenai way of like a uh, marketing uh, uh, presentations uh, because yeah. like uh, people uh, whenever I I've seen like many people they come to the training or some of the uh, you know conferences they are looking for like uh, how I can solve this problem. They come with their challenges and all these kind of things. And then, yeah, I hope like a uh, best of luck with uh, like all of you. Like, uh, you know, uh, I, I think like uh, you guys are doing a great, great job in like uh, Europe. And then, you know, I yeah, Fabiola is also like a uh, traveling across the like Atlantic as well, just for these conferences yeah, and everything. Yeah, and, and it's, yeah it's, it's terribly expensive. So uh, Matthias is coming over from Canada. Oh. Sam Taggart's oh. coming over. Ben Leiden's coming over. Oh. So they're all, yeah. they're all coming over. And then it's... Um, yeah, we moved it to August. It's actually quite expensive to fly in August to the UK, so we may have to move it back uh -huh. next year. Um, yeah. But it's you know they're, they're paying a considerable amount of money. But I mean, the, I mean the other thing. So the thing I'm presenting at one of the presentations I presented uh -huh. and I I probably put I don't know probably about three hundred hours of work into into the presentation. A lot of work, uh -huh. you know. I I, I work yeah. quite hard on my presentation. You wouldn't believe it, but because yeah. there's a lot of research um, into it, and 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 you need, you know, it's, it's and then you're you're offered the chance to sort of give it for free, and and I don't yeah. know, I, I I think it's uh, yeah, it could be yeah, it could be it could be made easier, but yeah. I mean I'll, I'll, I'll still do it anyway. I mean that's that's what people rely on, but I think I think sometimes from a team perspective, there's stuff that. You know, when you're working for a company, you say, "Well, I want to spend twenty hours in a presentation to get my friend." Yeah. And they say, "Well, what's the payback? You know, what's the tangible?" Yeah, yeah, uh, that's how I know. For doing for that, investing that amount of money, that sounds, yeah. uh, and it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a very valid question. So he's trying yeah. to answer those kind of questions, really. Um, yeah. oh, I haven't spoken about NI Week yet, have I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't like uh, you will be traveling to the Austin, like I think in like uh, in May the twentieth. I believe nineteen and twentieth. Yep. So my uh, my trip okay. starts on the fourteenth, yep. and I'm going uh -huh. to fly into fly into Denver on the fourteenth, and I'm going to drive uh -huh. to Albuquerque as the customer uh -huh. because I want to drive down the Rockies. So I'm doing wow. I, 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 like, I like awesome. to mix. I like to mix. <laughs> I like to mix business <laughs> with exploration. Uh, yeah. Then I'm at the customer for a couple of days, and I'm going to. Then drive down to El Paso and take the train to uh, Austin because I've, I've wow. never been on overnight. I want to go, want to go on an overnight train. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I'm in Austin that week, so I've got actually they've changed the. I, I thought I was first and last uh, presenting, so I've got two presentations. Um, uh -huh. But uh, they're, they're doing presentations Monday now, so I can't say that. What's mm -hmm. but my, my presentation is first thing Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, where I'm doing something called Lean Lab View. And Lean uh -huh. Lab View is really all the lessons we've learnt and applied, mm -hmm. sort of put down in words, that actually make mm -hmm. uh, Lab View projects kind of easy to deal with and portable. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's quite a practical thing, but it's it's it talks about the various techniques you can do to switch off the advantages of the IDE and. Uh, uh -huh. Various various things like that, so it's quite practical. But the the theory side of that will comes on the last presentation on Thursday, which I'm told is a great uh, uh, <laughs> is, is a great <laughs> honour. But it's it's generally you're speaking to lots of people who are very very tired. <laughs> <being> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and so, so my title for it is Immediacy and Debugging, which is a, a typical engineering title for the presentation. Now, marketing have come up with Professor Watts's theory on why lab programming in LabVIEW is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Which I still think is, <laughs> I kept, <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> Sorry, I kept that in. <laughs> so I've got, I've got two titles for that presentation, but if you, uh, if you go on NI week, it's, uh, it's the latter. <laughs> so it's, uh, Professor Watson's very on why I love you is fun. But essentially okay. that one has been my main interest. So what I'm really interested in is, um, is why things get complex and how that perception uh, yeah how you know how you can feel a project's getting away from you and you, you're not understanding how it's going together and there's a lot of psychological stuff in this one um wow um, there's a lot of uh yeah it's, it's i'm quite pleased with it it's it's I've just, yeah it's, I, 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 yeah. Also going on. yeah i think like a very very typical like a steve's presentation like you know not only about technical side but you know the uh, people and then the system you know. Well, I usually have some Machiavellian reason for presenting something as well. And the point of this original <laughs> result, which I gave in 2015 was to try mm -hmm. to focus. Uh, no, I think I think I think I've I've I've, I've seen that slide somewhere like uh, in the past. Yeah. I yeah. Think, well, the, the, the original yeah, presentation, the 251, I did a the uh, CLD summit in the UK, and that got videoed. But this is very odd. I've changed it radically. This is it's a similar subject matter, but the the yeah. slides are radically different now because I've I've done a lot more sort of my I've done a lot more research on sort of sports science because uh, apparently oh, yeah, yeah. The, the nearest I could find to to programming was was being a, a racing driver. So uh -huh. <laughs> there's quite a lot of sports science in racing driving, which which is is similar in in to some of the things I was trying to get to. Um, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. I don't, I have no idea what what anyone will take from them. I I, I tend to do these things selfishly. I don't, uh, I, you know, I, I have no idea how they're going to be received. I, th I, th I think like this is this is very very important that like uh, you know, not everything goes in parallel or like uh, going towards the same direction. Uh, you can actually get like a, you know different context and different perspective, like you said, because. Yeah. Uh, yeah, most of the time, like people are only talking about best practices using LabVIEW, FPGA, uh, RT, and all this kind of stuff, like uh, how to make your code cleaner, all this kind of stuff, and this. But like uh, sometimes, like uh, they give you like a different perspective. Perspective, like uh, you are talking about, you know, how uh, you have to, you know, how to deliver the project rather than only focusing on the design patterns. Or let's say, like I have a favorite. You know, uh, just like you, uh, uh, you know, you quoted like a Machiavellian uh, yeah. stuff and everything. Just like that, there is a, like a, one book or like a, a book of five rings. I do not know like a, whether you have read or not. In that book, like uh, the philosophy is basically you should not have a favorite weapon because like it is written by a samurai from Japan. It's a oh, real okay. story he wrote. You should read that book. Yeah. yeah. So he, he speaks about like don't have a favorite weapon. For example, let's say. Producer consumer loop is my design based design pattern, and I want to, like, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, like a show it into like each and every product. So sometimes, yeah. like, it can be very simple project. Sometimes it can be very larger project or different things. Uh, it may not work out. And then in that uh, like a book, like uh, they say that like uh, let's say like I like you know uh, fighting with like a bow and arrows, and yeah. I don't want to use any other tools like sword or anything. And now, like I'm like uh, sitting on the top of the like a uh, tower and then uh, shooting the arrow, it works effectively well at that point of time. But what if like uh, I think like uh, you must have watched like uh, some of the series uh, recently, and let's say like uh, one of the enemy like uh, climbs off the tower and then comes close to you, you don't have any uh, you know experience of like a close combat. Now yeah. it's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, I, I think I think it's a it's a very good analogy to be quite honest. I yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I like it because I mean. Pretty much the thing I've been talking about most in the last sort of three years is is what I call programming enlightenment, and it's yeah. actually go you go through stages of programming. So you 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 find something that works for you, and yeah. and without much outside world experience or anything else. So. 
for example, if you come straight into Levy and you learn Act Flavor, I'll keep picking on Act Flavor, but it's, a, it's an easy yeah. title to sound. But if you learn that and it's the only thing you've ever done, you're going to think it's the best thing for everything because it's the only yeah. thing. And that's, a stage, <laughs> that's a stage in programming enlightenment. And so you'll get people uh, saying, oh, yeah, yeah, every, any, you, you can't do anything else in, in this language. And, and you say, well, yeah, you can. <laughs> You just don't know how to because you only you've only got this one skill, and yeah. and as you go further and further into into programming, you get more practical experience and and more failures, and and actually, if you analyze your failures, you yeah. you will see that that you have to incorporate a different view, and and it, and I think to me the end point the the the, the Varna point of, of of it is you you take a view that people are people you know and some people like comments yeah. some people hate comments well who's right yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and, you, and you see this with all the sort of dogmatic discussion oh you've got to do test driven design and if you're not doing that you're not a proper programmer and, and uh, i don't do it because it's boring and and <coughs> but if your brain is is that's boring for me and i'm and i'm really really broken you know i'm <laughs> I'm, I've, I've worked in factories where I've had to work on 15 jobs at a time, you know, and, and yeah. so my brain is broken. It's not, it's not a, a nice, uh, it's not a, the type of brain that can go through this type of work and not get distracted. Whereas if you are that type of person, it works brilliantly for you. If you, if, yeah. and, it, and it is, you know, I can see the logic in it, and I have tried it, but it just doesn't work for me. Yeah, and, fair enough. And that doesn't mean that the software I produce is, is uh, any less or more. You know, it just means it's different, and, and the way I produce it is different. And if, if as long as you deliver, then mm -hmm. you know, you, you be you, and that's the top of the <laughs> is, is yeah. you know. And, and if if you you know if if part of your remit, if part of your, your requirements are that you need to do code that anyone can pick up. Well, yeah. then you do. You need to be able to change your design to yeah, so that pick it up. I mean, we we always make sure our code is a yeah. deliverable code that people can modify. Not us, but people. We don't want service contracts. We don't yeah. want to support software. Ideally, what I'd like is other people to support my software because then mm. I can get on to making new stuff. But yeah, that's a, a very inherent part of our our process and our design. That's a very useful thing for us, but it's not the only thing. That's just us. You know, if if you if you work in a factory and you're there's fifteen of you and you you you're sharing input into uh, one machine, for example, you the way you work is it's entirely different than the way I work. Yeah, now, I've done yeah. so. I've probably done three hundred projects in the last sort of twenty years, probably more. You know, we're churning out a lot of projects. And yeah. each project is completely different. Well, then yeah. my use case is utterly different. It's not even, yeah. not even sort of comparable. The 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 the, the way we work, yeah. and the way uh, it has to be very different. That doesn't mean I don't know how to go into a company like that and, and <laughs> work in in the way that they should work. But it, it won't be yeah. the way I work because it's it's just different. Um, yeah. So there are important things to standardise. I mean, for anyone who wants to work for us, you have to write code our way, um, and that's it. There's, there's no, there's no middle ground to that argument because I'm going to be left to look after that code, and and when I yeah. retire, somebody Makes else sense. is going to be left to. Look. So me and me and Adrian, who's my my colleague at SSDC, mm -hmm. we can swap code, you know, and I can work on his code, and he can work on mine, and and our code has always come from a similar basis. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and it has done for 20 years, you know, so I could walk into his project and run on it and he could do the same to mine. And, oh, really awesome. And that's, and that's a huge advantage. And it seems to me that's just good engineering practice. It's not even a software thing. It's to say, well, <laughs> shouldn't, if you've got yeah. two people working together, shouldn't they be able to look at each other's code? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not, yeah. it, a, lot, a lot of what people call software engineering is just engineering, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, um, no, but but you know it's 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 those kind of things I like, kind of interest yeah. me really. Yeah. I don't know how long we've been going, mate. I've been talking yeah. ages. So, yeah, 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 that's right. yeah, nearly nearly like ninety minutes now, like a nearly a football uh, full time, and then like we're going into the extra time now. So like a, a 
uh, Steve, like this has been like a really, really awesome like uh, interview I had with you. And then I learned a lot from you, from your experience, uh, working with the community, working with like, uh, you know, your uh, different kind of projects, your perspective, your methodology, and, uh, you know, not only working with the lab projects, but everything else. Uh, so like uh, before we wrap up, like uh, uh, what would you like to, you know, give the general kind of message to like uh, all this, uh, you know, the lab users as well as the lab community and the people like uh, who will be coming to Yana Week uh, to like uh, watch your like uh, presentations as well as uh, people who are planning to meet you at the GDEPCON. I know like uh, you guys are making it highly possible for like all this, like, uh, you know, alternate way of looking at the lab view. I believe that is uh, why like a GDEPCON uh, came into the existence uh, and like uh, I know like uh, this conversation can go on forever and forever you got like uh, so many things to share but like I'll uh, look forward like maybe like uh, next uh, conversation we can do in the uh, near future and like uh, I'll be looking into your like uh, presentations as well so yeah the final words uh, for this conversation uh, to all the audience I'm not as scary as I look is one <laughs> thing so talk to yeah. me because I talk a lot but uh, quite, <laughs> I'm quite tall and I'm an old punk rocker and uh, yeah. and quite scruffy, but uh, you, I'm, I'm I'm reasonably approachable. Um, <laughs> when I'm when I'm at an eye week, I I tend to I'm not a, I'm a country boy and I don't really like crowds, so uh -huh. you may find me outside. There's there's areas uh, in the conference centre which are like balconies. You may find me out there, but just because I'm on my own doesn't mean you don't approach me and say hello because I, like, <laughs> I, like, I do like. Um, it's just group. It's just crowds I don't like. Okay. Um, what else can I say? Um, you gave me a long list of questions there, and I only listened to the last one. Uh, I, I think the, the 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 advice I would give any programmer mm -hmm. or anyone who just likes making stuff is mm -hmm. just learn to finish. Just learn mm -hmm. to finish. Uh, mm -hmm. And if something is stopping you finishing, you need to uh, need to look at what that is. You need to change. Yeah. Uh, you need to change your processes, whatever, and concentrate on that. Because once you've cracked that, once you've learned to finish, <laughs> then you're a proper engineer. Then and you're you're a proper maker of things. Um, I, I see far too many people do the easy stuff, which is starting. Starting's <laughs> easy. I know I'm I'm the same. So I'm I'm not talking from a yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking from a <laughs> position of judgment because I'm I'm a brilliant yeah. starter. Yeah. Terrible yeah. finisher, but the big difference is is, is, yeah. is finish, uh, and um, and if you do that, then the world will, the world will beat a path to you, you know, not the, yeah. the other way around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Steve, for your like a kind words and your time. Like uh, we spend like uh, quite a lot of time here and everything. So hopefully, like uh, we'll be learning a lot from you. Uh, in like uh, you know your expert advice as well as not only in terms of lab view but how to engage with like uh, handling the project and even like you are chair of like ZDEFCON as well. So uh, I wish like uh, all the best for your like a uh, Rocky Mountain uh, adventure as well and your presentations at DNI Week and grand success for the ZDEFCON. Hopefully like I will meet you soon and everything. Yes, you've got to come over, man. Save your pennies. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you very much uh, for the entire audience as well, like uh, who has been tuning in to these interviews. Uh, next time we'll have like yet another personality and lab champion uh, in our interviews. Thank you very much for.